What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we will be heading back into SQL for our third portfolio project. Now, I am extremely excited for this project in particular for a few reasons. One, we're getting back into SQL and I really like SQL. And two, we are finally focusing on data cleaning. And I have talked so much about why data cleaning is important and that you really need to learn how to clean data and that that's a big part of what a data analyst does, but I haven't actually showed you how to do it yet. And so that is what this whole project is going to be. And then at the end, you'll get to add it to your portfolio. So it's really a win-win. Now, before we start, I just wanna say that I think it's gonna be a little bit more advanced than our very first video in SQL where we walk through data exploration. If you see something that you have never seen before, I will do my best to explain it while we're walking through it. But if you get confused or it seems a little complicated, please pause it, Google it, do a little bit of research and then come back. And I think that will be very helpful. With that being said, let's jump over to my screen and we'll get started on the project. So we're gonna start over here on GitHub and this is where I've actually put the data set that we are going to be using. So I will put this link in the description. Uh, we're gonna go right over here to the Nashville housing data for data cleaning. All you have to do is click download and it's going to download it and you can open it up if you want to. We're not gonna do anything to this data at all, but really quick, I'm just gonna show you what it does look like. Um, and we'll of course look at this in SQL in just a little bit. But we have a unique ID, parcel ID. Uh, we have this address, a sales date, uh, the price of the home. So this is housing data if you didn't pick up on that already. Uh, who actually owns the home, the owner address, and then some information about land value, um, bedrooms, bathrooms, things like that. Again, not super important uh, because we're gonna be doing all of this in uh, SQL. So let's actually get this data into SQL. We're gonna import it the exact same way that we did uh, in the very first video. So we're gonna come right over here. I'm gonna go all the way down to Microsoft SQL Server 2019, import and export. We'll click next. Our data source is, like last time, a Microsoft Excel. And let's take a look, and we'll take that first one. This is the most recent one I've downloaded, but I just wanted to make sure, so I downloaded it a few times. Um, <clears throat> for the destination, we're gonna click SQL Server Native Client 11.0, and this is my client, or my server right here. And I'm gonna go down here, and I wanna put it in this portfolio project. So you know, just configure this to what your server is. Um, again, if you haven't done this before, you've never set up SQL Server or a server um, to go on SQL Server, I will leave a link hopefully right here, also in the description, uh, like I did for the first project. So, um, you know, be sure to go through that video so that you know how to download this and have everything. We're gonna copy the data, we're gonna take sheet one. Um, we could have renamed sheet one to something else, but uh, we didn't. And then we're going to finish this and finish and it should run uh, successfully, hopefully. It's looking good, perfect. So we have 56,477. So let's head over to SQL. All right, let's go to our database, portfolio project. Uh, and here is our sheet one. Now I'm gonna rename this. Um, let's rename it, what is it, Nashville? Let's just do Nashville housing. That's what I'm gonna rename it as um, at least. So when I post these queries um, to the GitHub and you see them, this is what they will be. So if you want to have them the exact same or be able to copy and paste them, um, you know, you should you should do that as well. So let's take a look really quick. Let's select the top 1,000. <clears throat> but there's about 56,000 rows. There's a lot of data in here um, and a lot of things. So. Uh, I'm about to open up a, a save thing and we'll walk through the exact things that we're gonna be working on in just a little bit. But um, yeah, this is what the data looks like in here. There's lots of columns, uh, lots of data. So really excited about this. Um, let me pull this open really fast. It's gonna be this project walkthrough. <clears throat> here are the things, and I'm gonna show you this really quickly. Here are the things that we're gonna be walking through. So we're gonna standardize the date format. We're gonna populate the property address data. Um, that's referring to this right here. If you notice, there's the address and there's also the city that it's in. So we wanna be able to separate that out. Um, and that is actually right over here. We're gonna be doing the same, same thing to the owner address, except that has an address, a city, and the state, um, which makes it a little bit more complicated. And so um, 
that one should be really, really cool to, to show you. Um, oh, whoops, I, I messed up. <clears throat> That's what this one is, breaking it out into individual columns. That's what we're going to do for that. This populating the property address, um, it, you know, if you notice, and we'll go into this a little bit, there's actually some values in the property address that are blank. But I'm going to show you how you can actually populate that, um, which, you know, has a, it's just a cool trick that I've used a few times, and it, it, it does work. I mean, I think you'll find that one interesting. Um, in the sold as vacant field, we're going to be doing some um, some case statements. If then, um, then we're going to be removing duplicates and then deleting unused columns. So we have a lot to get through. This could be potentially the longest video, and I'm okay with that um, because I'm I love SQL. Down here, and and I will say that when I when I in the very first video I said it's going to be an ETL video, um, and I fully intended on doing that, but I ran into not issues on my side, but issues in the fact that the ma vast majority of people who are going to be watching this are not going to be able to do what I did to configure my server. Um, but I left it in here anyways. When I think ETL is an automated process in order to uh, extract the data from somewhere, we're going to transform it and then put it somewhere. This was going to be the extraction method, um, and I was going to put it in a store procedure so that you could um, you know, run the run the store procedure or run the job, import the data. It was going to be really cool. But I know that if I was having trouble with it, me trying to explain it to you and you being able to figure it out on your side was going to be very tough. I left this anyways because I was able to get it to work on my computer. Um, but it is tough and it took a lot of research. Um, and I did this for a previous server like a year or two ago and I remember it being crazy hard but I was able to figure it out on my computer. So if you want to try it out, um, try it out and, and look into this stuff. So I'm going to leave this here. This is just for if you want to try it, it's a little more advanced. Um, and so you don't have to just import it. And this will be a data cleaning project instead of an ETL project. But data cleaning is what 90% of it was going to be anyways. Um, anyways, let's go back up to the very top. Really quickly, I have a whole nother laptop right here, as I did in the first video. I didn't show it to you last time, but um, I have all of my queries written out over here. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. We have a lot to get through. Now, before we start writing our queries, I am going to turn off my camera so I do not get in the way. All right, you should still be hearing my voice, but let's get started. Let's just start with select everything, and we'll do from, uh, and it is portfolio project dbo.nashville housing. So let's just get this pulled up on screen. Awesome. So this is exactly what we were looking at before. And the very first thing that we're going to be looking at is this sale date. Now, uh, I wrote standardized sale date, but I'm really just going to change the sale date. Um, so let's copy this really quick. And let's look at just sale date. And it has this time on the end and it serves absolutely no purpose and I, it just annoys me. I want to take that off. And so right now it's a, say, it's, it's a date time format, but we're going to convert and we're going to do date and we're going to take sale date, sale date, and we're going to go like that. And let's run this really quick. And this is what we want it to look like. All right, so let's say update and we have portfolio project specified up here so we can just say nashville housing and we are going to set sale date equal to and we're just going to copy this now i will say before we do this um i had some issues in my when i was initially doing it whether or not it made the update and i was i'm not sure why or why not it was doing it um so yeah it's not doing it right now I, you try it out on yours, it may or may not be working. I, I'm not exactly sure why that is because I would say like 80% of the time it's doing it, 20% it's not. I don't know why. Um, no logical explanation to that. But uh, when I most of the time when I did it, they would then be the same column. Something we can do, I just thought of, we can do alter, alter, can't even say that word, alter table, and we can say, um, I think it's new or it's add, add, um, give me one second. <clears throat> yeah. So add, and we'll just do sale date converted. Um, and let's make that a date format. 
and bum, 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 just like this. And then we can say like this and set sale date converted. Um, let's try this and see what happens. So I'm going to add this column and then I'm going to update this and it says it's affected. Let's see what happened. Uh, so let's write sale date convert sale date converted. Let's see what happened. Let's see if it actually worked. And it worked. Okay. So we we now have a column um, and maybe at the end we'll remove that sale date column uh, so that we just have that sale date converted. But we know what that is. You don't have to name it that. You can name it sale date two or something like that. Um, cool. Well, let's go down to the property address and let's get a, just a really quick look at it. Uh, let's copy this up here. I hate rewriting this stuff, so I, I'm always copying and pasting. Um, but we're going to be working with the property address. There we go. So let's take a look at this really quick. Um, so let's look at, sorry, I was looking at my notes. We need to look at it where the property address is null. So what you'll see really quick when we run this is that there are null values. Um, why there are null values? Yeah, I really don't know. Um, I, I really am not sure. But let's look at everything where this is, um, where it's null. So we have this property address, we have a sale date, a price, legal reference. Um, there's this parcel ID and there's this unique ID. Um, so we have a lot of information. And when you have something like this, something like a, a, an address, an address is, you know, the address isn't going to change. The address is the address. The owner, the owner's address might change, but the property itself, the address 99.9% .9 of the time is not going to change. So you can say with almost certainty that, you know, this property address could be populated if we had a reference point um, to base that off of. So really quickly, um, let's look at just everything. And let's look at, and we'll just order by, let's do property, not property address. Uh, let's do parcel ID. And let's take a look at this. So we have to do a little bit of some research on this. Um, but I'm going to show you something really quick. Let's see if I can find an example um, in not too long. Okay, so here's an example. Here's the same ID. So 015, bum, bum, bum. And that's the exact same address. And we'll find this a lot of times. And I look through the data and it's, it is pretty much accurate. Um, when it does have it, it, it is the exact same address. So this parcel ID is going to be the same as the property address. Um, so something that we can do is basically say, if this parcel ID has an address, and this parcel ID does not have an address, let's populate it with this address that's already populated because we know these are going to be the same. That is basically what we are about to do. Um, and it's not super complicated, um, but let's get started writing it. Let's copy that down there. Um, one thing we're going to have to do with this is do a self join. So we have to join the table to itself to look at if this is equal to this, then this needs to be equal to this, that kind of thing. Um, so real quick, let's just write that join part out and we'll go from there. I don't know why I sounded Canadian right there. We'll go from there. Uh, so we'll join on this and we'll say on <clears throat> a dot, oh wait, let's, let's label them. I'm gonna do this in the really lazy way. I'm just gonna do A and B a dot parcel ID is equal to B dot parcel ID. And um, let's see really quick. So we need to find a way to distinguish these. The sale date could be the same. Um, one thing, this unique ID is, it is unique. So we need these to be different. So let's use this and let's say, um, let's say and a dot unique ID is 
not equal to b.uniqueID. So all we have done here is we've joined these the same exact table to itself, and we said where the parcel ID is the same, but it's not the same row, right? Because this is a unique ID. Unique will never, or that means these will never repeat themselves, so we'll never get the same one. So if this is equal to this, but these are different, we want to then populate um, populate the other one. So let's do a dot parcel ID, and we'll say a dot property address, b dot parcel ID, comma b dot property address, um, and let's take a look at this really quick. And let's do let me see if this works where a dot property address is null. And let's see if see what comes up here. Okay, so this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to see. So we have this parcel ID, we have this parcel ID, and here is our address, and it's blank in all 35 of these. So we have an address for all of these, but we're not populating it. So what we want to do is we want to say, use this thing called is null. So is null is basically saying, it's the first thing is, what do we want to check to see if it's null? So we want to check a dot property address, this whole thing. Now, if it is null, what do we want to populate? Um, we want to put in there this b dot b dot property um, address because we want to take that property address and stick it in there. So um, let's run this really quick. So this row is what is eventually going to be stuck into this row. So this is perfect. Um, it's literally saying when it's null, take take this and put it there. And so that's what this um, this part of it is doing. So let's go in here and write our update. Uh, so we want to update and let's take this whole thing from here up. And we'll, this will be the set, oops. Um, so we're gonna set um, property, Okay, we need to specify, um, and just so you know, when you're doing joins in an update statement, you're not gonna say Nashville housing. Okay, that's gonna give you an error. You need to use it by its alias, so let's put A. So now we're gonna say property address is gonna be equal to, and now we're just gonna copy this is null, and put it right here. <clears throat> and we only wanna update, let's see if it, it does take this. So I think this should be correct. Let's let's test it out really quick, and we're going to run this above query and see if it made that update. All right, so there you go. Um, as you can see, there are now none that have null in there. Otherwise, it'd be giving us an output right now. So that one is fixed. We can go back and check it if you want to. Please go back and, and double check that. Um, but that is what we did, and it worked perfectly. So that's what that is null does. It, it checks to see if this is null. If it is null, it, it, it can populate with a value. You can also do like a string. And what we, I mean, you can write, you know, no address if you wanted to do something like that. We don't want to do that. We're going to keep it how it is. <clears throat> Let's keep moving on. We do not have unlimited time here. I'm trying to keep this, I'm going to try to keep this on one under two hours. I'm stretching the rules because for my love of SQL, that is the only reason. Um, and this, I think, is going to take a little longer. So let's take a look and let's copy this real quick. Do, do, do. And let's take a look at, uh, what are we doing, the property address? The property address, um, and we can get rid of this as well. So if you notice, we have two things here. We have both the address and then there's this comma after all of them and there is the city. Now, you know, you don't know that or you maybe you haven't looked into this, but I have and there are no other commas anywhere except for in between these things as a separator, as a delimiter. Um, a delimiter is literally, if you don't know it, if you've never heard that term delimiter, a delimiter um, is something that separates different columns or different values. So for us, the delimiter is a comma. And for this first one, because we're going to be separating this one out and then we're going to be doing the owner address, um, 
For this one, we're gonna be using something called a substring, and we're also gonna be using something called a character index or a char index. <clears throat> so let's start writing that out, and let's do select, and let's say substring. Now, the substring that we want to take, we of course wanna be looking at, oops, let me um put this down here so it helps us out a little bit. And I'll get like that. So substring, and of course we're gonna be looking at property address. And we wanna look at position one. So we're gonna start at position one. Now this next part is Something that you may have never seen before, um, and if that if you haven't, that's totally okay. Uh, we're going to be the, the character index is going to be searching for the um, it's going to basically be searching for a specific value. Okay, that's all it's doing, and you can you can look into this a little bit more if you want. Um, so it's going to be char index. That's how it's spelled, and then like uh, an open parenthesis, and we want to specify what we're looking for. So it can be anything. You can even do. You know, if you wanted to, things like um, Tom, or you can do value, well, you do it um, like this. You can look for Tom, or if you're looking for a specific word like John, you can search that. That's what this is for. Um, but we're going to do a comma. Where are we looking? That's what this next one is. So we're, we're looking in property address. Uh, and then we're going to close the parentheses. And we'd also close it again to complete off that substring. And we're gonna say as address. Um, and let's just take a look really quick at this. <clears throat> so right now it's taking the, it is basically going, it's looking at property address. It's going to the very first value or starting at the first value. And then it's going until the comma. Now, the unfortunate thing is, is we're actually getting this comma in this output, and we don't want that. Uh, you don't want a comma at the end of every address. We can change that. Um, so we can say, because this is specifying a position, if we just look at this char index, which we can do really quick, it is going to give us a, a number. It is saying at position 19, that is where the comma is. Right, so it's not like it's taking. It's not a value, or it's not a. Um, it's not a string. It's a. It's a number. So we can say minus one, and if we do that, and now we run it, now that comma is gone because we're looking back. We're going to the comma and then going back one from uh, one behind the comma. So that's how you get rid of that comma right there. Um, the next one's a little bit more tricky because we're not starting, well, it's not super tricky, but we're not starting at that first position anymore. So let's put a comma, then we have our substring. Now, where we want to start is at this, as at where the comma is. So instead of position one, we want it to be where that character index, um, I don't want it to look like this this whole time. Is it like this? What am I doing? Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just get rid of this and see if that fixes it. What am I doing here? Oh, it's just because this is wrong. Um, and we'll just do comma parenthesis. That might fix it. Eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm wasting time. I'm gonna keep going. We want to start in this in this position, okay? Um, but we actually don't want to start at minus one. We need to start at plus one because we want to go to the actual comma itself. Then once we get to the comma, we want to add one. So if we didn't, if we just left it the same, again, it would include the comma at the beginning. Um, then we need to specify where it needs to go to. Where does it need to finish? Now, every single thing is going to be different. Every single address has a different length. But we can use that to our advantage in this one, and we can literally say the length of property address. You guessed it right. And then we can close this off. Let's see if that works. Okay, what's messing up? So we have property substring, property address, comma, character index, and then we have specifying it in the comma. Uh, we have the property address plus one. Okay, we can't have that right there. I don't know why I had that. <clears throat> Finally figured it out at the end. Um, so let's see what we're doing here. Let's see if it worked. It works perfect. Um, 
And again, this was one that I'm guessing a lot of people haven't used before. So I was trying to explain it a little bit more than other ones. Um, but if we take that out, if you take out that plus one, you're going to see the comma at the beginning right here. So that's what that is. Um, so plus one, and that's what we're going to keep. Now, we can't separate two values into, from one column without creating two other columns. So just like we added this um, table up here, we're just going to, I mean, we're, we're, I'm just going to copy this down here really quick. We're going to create two new columns and add that value in. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, add that. We're going to call this, um, let's call it, because it's property address, let's do property, property split, um, and this is the address. And then we'll say this one, this next one is going to be property, and this is city, split city. City. And this isn't going to be a date, of course. Uh, it's going to be, let's do nvarchar, and let's make it 255 just in case it's a large, um, just in case it is a large string, a large text. So then we can say um, update that, update that. Um, and now we need to in, insert um, what we did for it. So this first one is the address. So we're going to say that equals the address. And we're going to take this whole thing, this whole substring, oops, and copy that. And that's going to equal this. Um, and then at the end, we'll, we'll look at it really quick. So first, let's add this table. I'm going to do this one at a time really quick so you can see it. So it adds the table. Now it adds the results. And again, adds the table of city and sets that city to that substring. And now let's take um, let's take this and just do select everything from this. And you should see at the very end, because when you add it, it goes to the end. We should have two new values. And here we are. So property split address and property split city. Um, it's much more usable than this. I mean, this would be a nightmare, not a nightmare, it'd just be annoying to use this column. I mean, now that it's separated on the address and the city, it's so much more usable of data. It really, really is. The next thing we're going to be looking at is this owner address. Now, it was hard enough or it was tough enough to do this. Um, but I want to show you maybe even a simpler way to do it, even though this is more complicated. So let's go down here and let's get rid of this. So let's say... Um, Let's get this and let's just say property. Oops, no, we're doing owner. Owner address, here we go. Let's just take a look at this. Let's see what we got. So again, we're using, or we, what we have in here is the address, the city, and the state. So what we need to do is split all of those out. Um, and again, I don't want to use substrings again. That was a pain. I want to use... Um, Something a little different, something, again, that you may not have never seen is called parse name. Um, and parse name is super useful, um, especially for like delimited stuff, stuff that's delimited by a specific value. Um, so let me just show you what it is, and then we'll go from there. So what we can say parse, parse name, um, and we're going to be doing this on the owner address. Okay. Let's, let me see, let me see. Yeah, I mean, it's because I don't have this, of course. I do that all the time. So annoying. So on the owner address, um, and then let's do one. And let's just see what happens. Uh, nothing changed, of course, because parse name only is useful with periods, or, or that's what it looks for. That's what parse name looks for. And these are commas. So something we can just do is we can replace those commas with uh, a, a, instead of a comma, we replace it with a period. So super easy. We're just going to do owner address comma, um, and we'll look for the comma in there. Then we won't need to specify what we need to change it to. We'll change it to a period, and let's close that. And now let's run it. And it's taking... Tennessee. So something odd about 
at least to me, odd about parse name is that it kind of does things backwards than what you would expect it to do. Uh, let's really quick, let's add the other things. Um, you'll you'll get a kick out of, well, you won't get a kick out of this as much as I do. Here's one, two, three. Let's execute this and it separates everything for us, but it's backwards. So it's one, two, three. You would imagine it'd be one, two, three, but no, it's one, two, three. So all we need to do is go three, two, one, and run this. And there we go. So now we have it broken out. This is now our address. This is our city and this is our state. So super, what I would consider super easy, a lot easier than the substring, but I didn't want to show you the easy one first and then give you the hard one. Um, so now we just need to add those columns and then we need to add the values. So let's do this. Uh, let's make some room and I need to get rid of one of these. I think, oof, did I do that right? what did I do? I have my alter table update, alter table update. What is this doing here? What is this? I don't even know what this is. We'll just go like that. So now we have three. Perfect. Um, so from national housing, we're gonna say, we're gonna say this is the owner. Oops, owner split address. Um, actually, let me just copy the owner, make it easier. So we have owner split address, owner split city. And let's do owner split and then state. Oops. And copy there. Owner split city. There we go. Owner split address. Owner split address. So I'm putting all the sets equal to what we're about to add to. So now this first one, this three, is the address. We'll paste it there. The second one is the city. So we'll put that. Oh, I see what happened here. That's what happened. Got to get rid of that. Um, I set the owner split city equal to that middle one. And then of course, the third one is the state. So let's go do that. And that should be done. So let's do it two at a time. Oops, owner split address. What's wrong with that? Oh, I probably just got to run this first. Let's try that. Tried to get go too quick. Um, you can do this in a much more efficient way. I'm just doing this for visual purposes. I would update all the tables first or add all the um, columns first, I mean, and then do all the updating at the end. That's normally how I do it. But um, again, for visual purposes, this is what we're doing. So let's go get this. Actually, let's get this, bring this down here. Um, don't keep this in in your final queries. It's a lot of extra selecting everything. You don't need to do that. Um, so here we go. So owner split address, owner split city, owner split state. Again, so much more usable than when it's all in one column. I mean, it, it is 10, 100 times more useful data now. Um, I, you know, that one to me, you, that gets used a lot. Let's keep it going. I feel like we're making fantastic time. I don't even know. I'm not even keeping track of time. Time is not even relative anymore. It'd be three hours and I wouldn't care. Let's keep going. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at this column right here. Sold as vacant. Um, right now is no, but let's look at, let's do select distinct. Oh my gosh, I hate when I do this. I do this all the time. Am I the only one? I don't think I'm the only one. And we'll do spl uh, what is it? Sold as okay, sold as vacant. Let's do a distinct count on or, or distinct on these. So right now we have yes, no, and why I'm guessing, which is no and yes, and then no. So let's look at, well, just for just because I'm curious. Um, let's look at a count of. I don't want to do the. Let me just do sold as vacant. Let me do a count of this. And we'll group by uh, sold as vacant. Okay, let's run this and see what we get. Oh gosh, let me order by. Okay, here we go. Now we're now we're moving. Well, that's not what I wanted at all. Order by two. Here's what I wanted. Okay, 
So at no, we have 51,000. Yes, 4,000, almost 5,000. No, and then of just a few. So let's change them to, to yes and no, because these are obviously the vastly more populated ones. Um, and we're just going to do this through a case statement. So we're going to say, oh, yeah, let me get this ready before we start. Oh, yeah, I'm ahead of the game now. Let's do select, and we'll do sold as vacant. <clears throat> and then we'll start our case statement. Um, yeah, let's do it right here. So we'll do case when sold as vacant is equal to yes. All we want to do is say then we want to make it no. Oh, we want to make it yes. What am I doing? Jeez, I'm losing it. When, and I'm just, oops, 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 oops. Ignore that. Pretend that didn't happen. When sold as vacant is equal to n, then no. And then else, we want to say, if it's already, if it's not one of those values, it means it's already a yes or no. So we're just going to say, just keep it as sold as vacant. And then we'll end it. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's scroll through here and see if we get any that we can see. Oh, I just went by some, didn't I? Oh, I just went by some. I know I did. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. So here's an N. It's now a no. So this this sold as vacant is this column. The newly uh, the case statement right here is changing it. So the N is no. So this should work <clears throat> all. And this will be a unique update statement. Um, and I hope it works on like the first update statement that we we did. That was uh, that was a travesty. Um, let's do update Nashville housing. Um, and we'll say set. Sorry, I'm talking faster than I'm going. Set sold as vacant equal to. And we can just literally put in this case statement. Um, it's not pretty, but let's try it. Okay, now let's go look at this again and see if it made the update. There we go. The update statement worked. Oh, fantastic. It's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> okay, great. I'm glad that one worked. I was worried for a second that uh, my update had broken in um, in SQL Server. Now we're, now we're going to do something, um, these next two things. is We're going to remove the duplicates, and then we're going to get rid of unused columns. Um this removing duplicates, I got to be honest, I don't do it a ton in SQL, but I have done it, um, especially for like queries, you know, uh, when I'm looking at full tables, I, I will write some sort of temp table and like put the remove duplicates in there. I normally don't delete actual data. We are, we're going to do that, um, but it's not a standard practice to delete data that's in, um, that's in your database. So just... For future purposes, don't blame me if you delete all the all the duplicates by accident in your uh, table at work. So you can do this a few different ways, but the way I'm going to show you is we're going to write a CTE and we're going to do some Windows functions to find where there are duplicate values. Okay, so excuse me. So let's start writing out our CTE and or you know even we can write out the query first, then put it into a CTE. That might be a little bit better. So let's do select everything. And oh my gosh, I was about to do it. Somebody's out there just like waiting for me to make that mistake again. <clears throat> so we want to partition our data. Um, when you're doing removing duplicates, we're going to have duplicate rows and we need to be able to have a way to identify those rows, right? So you can use things like rank, order rank, um, row number. There are a few different options. We're going to be using row number. Um, and, you know, if you want to look into how rank and rank, uh, uh, like dense rank and all those ones work, please do that so you know why we're doing it. Um, but we're using row number because it's, the I think, the simplest um, and it's going to do what we need Exactly. So I'm going to get this over here. We'll say select everything because we're selecting everything. Then we're going to add this row number on here. So row number, and we're going to do these parentheses right here. I'm going to say over and an open parenthesis. Now we need to write our partition because we're going to partition this data. So we're going to say um, partition by, cool. 
Um, now, really quickly, while we're here, we need to actually know what we're partitioning on. That's helpful. So let me write this so while we're writing it, we can see what we're doing. <clears throat> we need to partition it on things that should be unique um, to basically to each row. Um, if And I guess for the sake of what we're doing, we're, we're going to pretend this unique ID isn't here. Um, although, you know, you could say I'm cheating. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to say, you know, if things like the parcel ID are the same, if the sale date is the same, um, the property address is the same, the sales price is the same, this legal reference, which I'm guessing is some type of legal document saying it's like somebody's uh, pro property. If all of those are the exact same, then to me, that is the same data. It's, it's unusable. Just for example, I mean, this may, I don't, I mean, this data is just some random data set I found online, right? So <clears throat> that's what we're going to be going with. That's what we're going to be running with and pretend that lie that I just told you is completely true. So what we want to partition by, uh, let's start with the parcel. Um, can I, is this not right here? Why is it saying this? Why is it not giving me? Okay, it doesn't even matter. I'm just going to say parcel ID. Um, we can say property, we'll do a property address. Stick with me, we're getting somewhere. We'll do sale price. Um, What do we say, sale date? I mean, there shouldn't be two of this. They didn't sell twice on the same day, come on. And then legal reference. <clears throat> and, oh, I know why it's not working, or my autocomplete isn't working, which I love. Um. It's because we're creating our own partition. So it's its own column, of course. I don't know why I'm, uh, it's late. As you can see down here, it's 11.15. It's getting late for me, but hey, I, I this is an adrenaline rush for me. Um, now we need to order it. Now we wanna order it on something that should be um, not necessarily, uh, I guess unique. Uh, so we're gonna order it on this unique ID. We'll see if that actually does what we want it to do. Um, Oops, what am I doing? Order by, come on. And we'll say uh, unique, oops, unique ID, perfect. And we should be able to close that off. And we're gonna call this row num. I mean, that's just, that just makes sense. So now we have this and let's run this really quick and see what happens. So, um, and maybe we should order this as well, but we'll, maybe we'll do that later. Yeah, let's order this on parcel ID. Um, order by parcel ID. Let's just see what happens because this, I think that should be pretty accurate. Um, bu -bu -bum. Let's scroll down and see if we get any. This is all ones. Maybe this should be doing it on unique ID. I don't know. Let's see if we get any hits. Okay, there was a two in there. Let's let's look at this really quick because I want to see it. Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. It is absolutely possible. <sighs> Somebody play some Jeopardy music for me real quick. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it's um, okay. So let's see. let's look at these two. Um, and let's see if I did something wrong. Oops. Don't need to pull that up. I was doing some research when I when that convert by wasn't working. Um, okay, so this one and this one, it's giving different row numbers. So let's look at the actual data. Ignore the unique ID, but the data itself. So the the sale date is the same, the sale price is the same, the legal reference is the same, the owner's the same. This is the same. I mean, literally every single thing in here is the same. So this is a good example. <clears throat> so we're going to, in this query that we're about to write, that that will be, that second one will be deleted because we don't need it now. There's, there's only one. So it looks like this is working as intended. Um, I can also do, um, let's do where row underscore num is greater than one. Let's see if that, I don't think it will work actually. Yeah, that's because uh, it is 
<laughs> that is in a Windows function. Of course, we can't do that. What am I thinking? That's why we need to put it into a CTE. Oh, of course, it all comes back. So let's call this, oh, it comes back to the CTE. Those things are amazing. Um, let's call this um, row num num CTE. And we'll say as, and then open parenthesis. And I don't think we can have an order by in here. Let's do it like this. And let's just do select everything from row number CTE. So again, if you haven't watched my like CTE, v CTE video or you've never used a CTE before, um, this is now basically almost like a temp table. So we're gonna be able to, this query down here is querying off of this table that we quote unquote created. So um, <clears throat> it looks like it's working. So all we're going to do is select um, everything from that. And we want to say where row num, because that's now a row, is greater than one. And let's order that by, I don't know, property address. Let's see if that works. And let's see what happens. Okay. So all of these are duplicates. We have 104 of them, it looks like. So there's not many. But it there's twos, I think threes, no no threes. So there's multiple of these rows or columns that are basically duplicates, um, and we want to delete them. So all we're going to say is we're going to select instead of saying select everything from row, we're just going to say delete. And uh, yeah, I got to get rid of that order by that doesn't work. And let's do this. There's 104, let's see if it worked. Um, so now let's do, let's go back and we'll say select everything and let's see if there's any more duplicates in there. There are none, that is fantastic. Every, I'm like biting my nails now to see if each one of these works. Um, Cause I, <laughs> that first one didn't work. Um, so yeah, so it worked. We got rid of the duplicates, that is fantastic. Um, and now it's smooth sailing from here cause we're just gonna delete some um, unused columns that we don't care about. This doesn't happen often. Um, this, I would say, actually happens more in like views. When I'm creating views, I have a view and I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to add that column. Let me just remove it because it's a, I don't need it. You don't do this to um, like the raw data that you import. Usually this is, I mean, again, best practices. Please don't do this to your raw data that comes into your database. Um, talk to somebody before you do this. That's just my my legal advice for the day. I'm not legally bound or legally held responsible for any mistakes that you make. So let's keep going. Um, we're literally just gonna delete some columns. It could be any columns that we want. Um, but for example, we got have these property split address and owner split address um, and city and state and city. <clears throat> and these are perfect and much more useful than these owner, um, these this owner address, because this is really unusable to be honest. So we're gonna delete those um, and maybe we'll also get rid of like I don't know, maybe the land that land use might be useful. This tax tax district, who cares about that? Um, so it's gonna be super easy. We're just gonna write alter table, alter table, did I say that right? Jeez. Um, and we're gonna say alter this table. And we're going to drop a column and you can do as many as many as we want. So we're gonna say owner um, address we're going to do tax district. And let's also do the property address. All right, and let's try this and let's see if it works. I'm nervous. All right, so as you can see that the property address is gone, the owner address is gone, the tax, what was it? Tax district is gone, and now we are left with this. Um, now remember, the whole point of everything we were doing was to clean up the data, right? We wanted to clean the data, and actually, now that well, now that we're here, we have this sale date as well, um, and we have the sale date converted over here. Let's get rid. I forgot. Let's get rid of this. Oh, that was my dog Max. Excuse him. Let's get rid of. Oops. Let's get rid of that sale price that that or the um, sale date that made me look like an idiot. This is sweet revenge sale date. Sweet, sweet revenge. 
All right, and it is gone. So it's as easy as that. Now remember, like I was saying before, the whole point of this project is to clean the data and make it more usable. Um, and it may not have felt like that as we were going through because I wasn't you know, really looking at the cleaning data. Uh, we were cleaning it, but you know, what was the purpose of it? I may not have highlighted that too much. All these other columns that we created um, are just, it's much more usable, much more friendly. Um, this is standardized now. And, you know, we, we did that through quite a few various methods. Um, so let's go back up to the top. We're going to recap what we did really quick. <clears throat> so using this convert, we tried to standardize the date format or change the date format. May or may not have worked for you. Didn't work for me. We populated this property address, um, which we did that before we broke this out. Because <laughs> if we reversed it, if we broke these addresses out into individual columns, and then we populated the, this thing, um, we would have, because then we went and deleted, uh, we went and deleted this column. Oops, sorry. We went and deleted uh, this property address. So we wouldn't have actually gotten any of that data. So there was a reason it was in that order. Uh, don't mess that up. That's happened. Um, so we broke it out. We did that to, to using um, substring char index as well as parse name and replace. Then we went through and we changed yes to no or y and n's to yeses and no's using case statements. Um, then we use we removed duplicates using a row number, a CTE, and Windows function of partition by. And then at the end, we deleted a few useless columns that we no longer want to see because um, they are horrible and terrible and, um, you know, we don't want to see them anymore. That is the entire project. That was everything. And you did it. And I'm honestly super proud of you for sticking around this long. It, this, this was not necessarily an easy project. We used quite a few new things that I may have not talked about or showed you before. Um, this to me is just the beginning, right? This is just a, a glimpse into all the things that you need to do. You need to look for, um, in order to clean data. So, you know, I really do think this is a good portfolio project because it will show that you understand and know how to clean the data. Although this is not an end to end project, right? That could, that would take a long time and a lot more exploratory analysis, looking into the data to, to figure out what we need to change. But for all intents and purposes, I mean, this is a, a pretty good project for cleaning data. And I hope that you learned something. I also hope that you worked on this hard. Um, if you want to make any improvements, please do that. This is not perfect by any means. There's other things that you could change. Um, you could, you know, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try to guess. You could do other things to this data, though, um, and, and create your own queries, create your own um, data cleaning uh, a part of this. And so... Um, you know, do that. If you are able to get this, um, the ETL part of it done, do that. I think it'd be really, really cool. Um, again, I was able to get it to work, but I don't think 90% of people out there would be able to get it to work. Um, it's just every computer is different. Every server is configured differently. Um, and so it would just be a huge pain. So I decided to cut that out and I'm sorry. Um, but hopefully this will suffice. Um, with that being said, this is it. You made it all the way to the end. Again, I'm super proud. You guys are doing fantastic. You guys are the ones putting in the hard work to build the portfolio for your future job. I mean, it's not easy, but you're putting in the work. And so and so, kudos to you. Um, in our next video, we're going to be going into Python for the very first time. Really excited about that one because um, I think the only Python video that I have up right now is on one where I was scraping data from Twitter. So, um, you know, this will be a nice change of pace or a little bit different content that I normally put out. And so I'm really excited about it. And I hope you are as well. With that being said, I am done with the video. I'm going to be stopping it soon. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like this video. Leave a comment below um, telling me how it changed your life. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.